hopefully this fixed the problem. Usually before I start streaming, there we go, perfect. So usually before I start streaming, I restart my computer and I forgot to do that tonight. I was watching a awesome, um, I like I have five minutes left on it, a documentary, it's a three part documentary by Sticka about Paprium, which was uh, a game by Watermelon Studios that pretty much was total fraud. Uh, that's a link to part one. Uh, part three just came out today, so there's one, two, and three. Definitely recommend checking it out. He did a lot of great work exposing exactly what, wrong, what went wrong with it. But I have been itching to play this game for a couple days now. It's Paradise is Yoshi's Island, where all the Yoshis live. <laughs> B's like, there's so many Yoshis to kill, where do I start? They were all in uproar over the baby that fell from the sky. By the way, the part you missed was like a uh, Kamek hit the stork carrying Mario and Luigi. And fell to the sky, somehow survived. I guess uh, terminal velocity is different in this universe. Wait, the baby seems to know where he wants to go. The bond between the twins informs each of them where the other one is. The Yoshis decide to carry the baby to his destination via a relay system. Now it begins a new adventure for the Yoshis and Baby Mario. I love this game. It is probably one of my top picks for best games of all time. It uses the Super FX2 chip uh, and was one of the kind of last games to come out in the States, so it's a little bit pricey, not too bad last time I checked. Let's see, eBay. Also in the Japanese copy, which is called Yasi. It's not Yoshi, it's Yasi. Super Mario World 2. Seeing prices like all of a sudden like twenty dollars and like forty to fifty. So I'd probably say this is probably closer to a forty to fifty dollar game. It's probably what I take a guess at. If Baby Mario falls off Yoshi's back, the countdown timer will begin. We reach a zero. Kamek's toadies will kidnap Baby Mario. The more stars you collect, the safer you are. The countdown timer will slowly count back up to ten. Complete a stage by passing Baby Mario to the next Yoshi. Yeah, so I I was thinking the other night, the last time I streamed, I had uh, the my pre-stream music was Yoshi's Island 2 music we're playing right now. I was thinking, oh, that's what it sounds like without Mario crying constantly. That's what the music sounds like, really? No, but um, this game is a pretty good challenge. I really, really love it. And back when it was new, it probably took me, I want to say about two months to 100% everything. I mean, I'd beaten the game already. I decided I wanted to go back and 100% it. And that took probably about a good two months. It's no joke. But ever since this game, like, I've never seen a Mario or a Yoshi's Island game that challenges you as much as this one. Like, everything just seems ridiculously easy. It's like, I don't want it, like, impossible hard, like, you know, like, a really hard game, but I want to have some challenge to it. And you're right, this, like I said, this is a tough game to 100%. It took me two months. Unfortunately, it was on my old cart before I sold off all my games, so I no longer have that copy. Uh, but when I started getting into collecting again, uh, I, and I bought my copy, I was like, oh, I should probably sit down these days and do 100%, and I think about halfway through, I'm like, oh my god, I am no, nowhere near as good as I was like 23, 24 years ago. The music is great, though. I've actually been known to, like, hum and whistle out poorly. Oops. Here we go. It begins. So, Morg, which one is worse? Mario crying or the Sonic Drowning music? Get used to the uh, eggs. Yeah, I would say, actually, honest for me, I would say that the crying is annoying. 
But I would say the uh, Sonic music for me is far worse. Because, I mean, that's just like an anticipation, like, hurry up, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. It's like, oh god, it's like more stressful. For me, at least. I mean, they're both, like, I wouldn't really want either one, but... If I had to say one was worse than the other, that would be my choice. I'd say Sonic Drowning, and then this would be a very, very close second. Chomp Rock is the usual object. Push along, roll, bowling over your enemies. If it gets stuck, stand on one edge, you'll start rolling. Okay, cool. Give me that red coin. Eggs. Yay! I will say that I'm noticing with the Super Nintendo Classic here, there's like a very slight amount of lag. It's not too bad. I've seen some people say it's like completely unplayable, but I'm like, no it's not. I've played unplayable lag games. And I guess maybe it's like the functional psychopath in me, but I'm just like, being crying doesn't bother me. At all. I remember one time my uh, then-girlfriend and I were driving, we were taking a trip back, back from Michigan from visiting my parents to back to Boston where we were living at the time, and her son uh, started crying in the back seat like he needed to have his diaper changed. And uh, it's like, we were like not able to pull over, there wasn't like a gas station or anything for us to do for a while, so he was crying for probably about 30 minutes or so, there's nothing we could do to console him. And she was just like getting visibly upset and, and aggravated, and she's like, why are you not upset? And it's like, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's like, I like the kid like he was on my own kid, like my own son, but it's like, it just, babies crying do not bother me. How many red coins? That's right. I was think I get used to like Mario 64 where you just have only eight red coins. And in this game, it's 20 per level. Man, this music is just so freaking addictive. Give me them stars. Stars. No more? Okay. Hmm. Per me. Oops. One direction. making really slow progress. But if you've never seen a speedrun of this game, it is impressive. Uh, Trihex has done it at GDQ a couple times, and that is just impressive to watch it do like 100%. Even just like uh, Carl Sagan did it as well. It's just impressive to watch somebody like how much you have to remember which coins are red coins because they're all disguised. And then do it ridiculously fast, like even like the, uh, what was it, the, the flutter kicks we have to do over this pool of lava for like, uh, I think a total of 17 times. It's a frame perfect trick 16, 17 times in a row. It's 1 60th of a frame of a second you have to hit the button to do the perfect flutter. Ooh, the flip cards, item chance. Aim with the cursor and press A, collect the item shown. If you get Kamek, you lose all the items, hit exit to quit. Yes. Yoshi is my father's name. I prefer to be called Yoshi! Or Yasi. It's, I don't know what it is, but in Japan, it's not Yoshi's Island. It's Yasi. Y-O-S-S-I? Give me a second here. Let me take my cart. Yoshi's Island. 
That's Donkey Kong Country 2. Here we go. Yeah, Y-O-S-S-I, Yossi. Which is like a take on the Japanese, kind of like Yos, which is like a good thing. It's like it's positive, so... Watch out. Blow! Oops. We're off to a good start already. Two, and I'm already off to an excellent start. Doing great, doing great. Sitting that world casual speedrun already. Yeah, there will be deaths, there will be substandard gameplay. It's my channel, I mean, it's, it's me streaming. You shouldn't be too surprised, really. Not sure where that one's going, but not towards me. Now, the Super Nintendo Classic does have some weird sound emulation issues I've seen. Um, I'm pretty sure that sound falling is different, but we'll know for sure when I get my Retro Tank, my new one, hopefully. Yes, I know how to do it, Mom. Oops. <laughs> it's like, what the heck happened? Uh... Back here, real brat. Excuse me, I knew about them before they became popular on Twitch. Yeah, it's kind of hard not to feel like a hipster sometimes. I feel like that for a lot of way about music or somebody discovers a movie I've seen for like a ridiculous amount of time. It's kind of like uh, my cousin was trying to tell me about Battle Royale. He's like, dude, it's like this totally insane movie where like these kids have to fight to the death. They're like 14 years old. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've, I saw it before it came out in the United States. It's like I've, I saw it like literally like... 20 years ago, almost. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, do you want a copy of the DVD? <laughs> He's like, okay, great. Alright, what'd you got for me, talking box? Press start to display your score. Do you use special items? Use left and right. A directional pad to choose an item. Press A. Exit press B. Okay, very good. I don't have any special items. Alright, chopper time. Get to the chopper! Do it now! I think it was Jim Gaffigan said, It's funny that everybody can do an impersonation of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but Arnold Schwarzenegger can't do an impersonation of somebody saying the word California. that'd be a red coin. It was not. Uzi 9mm automatic. Did it spawn me another one? Yes, it was. Okay, cool. Base plasma post rifle.
Another game I put on here and I was having problems with trying to get to work was Tales of Fantasia, uh, which is a RPG. And it's been a, it's a game I've been kind of keeping on wraps, but actually it's a, I want to play that on stream when I get my retro tank. Now, I think that it's the reason why it might not be working correctly. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, is... It's like one of the last few games that come out for the Super Nintendo, which a lot of games I love were. And uh, the cart size for it is gigantic. It is like the largest cart size that, that Nintendo made for the Super Nintendo. It's uh, 48 megabits, which is like 8 megabytes. It's got speech samples, it, got, it has everything. And I don't know if maybe the ROM header is wrong, I'll need to double check that. Or if it just, the emulator inside this just can't run it for whatever reason. What I did find interesting is that I can play Street Fighter Alpha 2 for Super Nintendo on the Super Nintendo Classic, put it on here, but it doesn't have sound. Because it was a special chip that had to decode everything, which is why if you've ever played that version of the game, one, it's freaking amazing that they managed to get that game on the cart to begin with. Uh, because, I mean, it was literally a 32-bit a game stuck into a 16-bit cart. But uh, it actually used a special chip to decode the graphics and everything, so if you play the game, it'll be like, round one, fight, and then it'll pause for like one and a half, two seconds, and then the match will start and the, the music and everything else. So... It still does that even, still pauses to decode everything, but there was a special chip inside. Okay, my... It's like, why am I not able to do the ground pound? It's, it's weird, because like I said, it can it'll load it up, but it won't play music. Oh, okay. I saw that, like, uh, actually I have the uh, Tales of Fantasia as a repro cart. I bought it from some website. I'll have to post up it here a little bit later. So I don't have a problem with reproductions, except for very few cases. Like, if you're talking about, like, an FX game like this, then I do have problems with it, because Super FX chips games were very rare. I mean, they're, they're not, like, Hagane rare or Arrow Fighters rare. Like, they only made, like, 20 of them. But they're not very common. I don't have a problem with, like, old sports games that there's, like, a billion of them running around. They, like, like NBA Live 97. No one cares about that game. You can probably find it for a buck off of eBay. That's not a problem. I don't have a problem with that being, like, the, the chip taken out, flash, and put another game on it. I'm cool with that. But FX chip games are special. They didn't make a whole lot of them. They were more expensive. And to me, that's just like really destroying something in order to make a repro. So that's the only thing I'm up against for repros is like for rare, legit rare cards like Super FX games. No, I don't want to switch. I think that was for aiming style. That's the only thing, but other than that, uh, I got a repro of Tales of Fantasia. And the only thing I, f I noticed about it was that it was done by DJAP. And those guys are funny. If they can work in a swear word where it doesn't need to be, they will do it. I mean, it's cool that they translate the game, but at the same time, it's like, you know, there was no F-bomb, there was no swearing at that point in time. Why did you put this in here? Ah, crap. Yeah, just about. I mean, it was pretty much just like that. It was like, okay. Yeah, at some point they do have some in the translation, somebody dropping an F bomb. It's like, it was never in that in that game. I know, because I know some Japanese. It's like, I can verify that no character swore in that game. That kind of reminds me of like uh, early fan translations for anime too. Like before Crunchyroll came along and became more common for, like, you know, have official translations, you'd have fan sites and stuff. Oh god, do I want to know, Pat? 
Was it this? I'm trying to remember what fan group it was, but there's like a couple memes online. You'll see stuff like the different translations going around like, okay, here's what those actually said. And here's like what all the different groups are translated as. And like one of the things was like, forgive me for swearing. It was like, it was like the original line was like, I'm going to go down to the store. And I was like, fucking gonna go fucking go to a goddamn fucking store. I'm like, yeah, that would be them. <laughs> it was just like completely unnecessary. It's like, what is going on? So I'm going to guess it was probably, I would have to say this game. I don't know, because you got to remember I'm on opioids again, like oxycodone, not the good stuff. Yeah, I screwed myself up by that. Oops. Boulder's still here. Okay, good. I don't know, whenever I see a video that has Mike Matei on it, I just, like, don't watch it. Oh, God. So, the question is, did he do better than I did? Because I am terrible at that game. So, I love Mega Man X 1 through 3, but it's just, like, 4 I just did not like. It's not like a hatred or anything, it just never clicked with me. And I know a lot of people like you, you know, I know you like that game. But for me, I just, it, I never liked it. It just felt like too different of a game. It's like they fundamentally changed the formula. And then, you know, Zero, it was kind of cool to be able to play as him, finally, like, legit, instead of just, like, through part of one level or near the end and then that being it. But it just seemed like it was too different from the formula. And then X5 and 6 just kind of nose-bombed it to the ground, and then you got the travesty, which is 7 and 8. Oof. Like I said, a lot of people love it. Like I said, I know you like it. Um, and then, like I said, my brother loves it. He played it the hell and back and everything else. And just for me, just like after 3, I just didn't like the X Games anymore. First translation played was second in Setsu 3. Oh yeah, that was a really good one. I did play that back on emulator probably around 2002, I want to say. And I remember like X6 got like, it was ridiculous. It was, I don't think there's any way to go through like a lot of levels without getting hit at all. Because like, like, it's clearly designed to play a zero, but if like, you just get smashed all the time. Alright. Nothing! Okay, cool. Wasted that. Playing all the Castlevanias again. Funny how many repeats there are in the machine with different names. Oh yeah. Now I remember this really impressing me. It wasn't like, oh my god, like levels of impressing, but like to see that like these backgrounds were 3D modeled. And this is another use of the Super FX chip. Like that. It's like that was Super FX chip, and then you also had like the uh, sprite scaling as well as another trick at the FX too. Pardon me. Yeah, Blue Lines is the American version, and then you had um, New Generation, which was the European release, which was slightly censored. Or maybe it's the other way around, because I remember one of those versions was censored. Oh yeah, this game is like, it used the FX2 chip, it was, it was a late life game. So remember that, um... So I was telling Morg earlier, I don't know if you were lurking or not, Pat, but like, back in the, like, back when, you know, when we were living in the same area, back in Whiteman, um, and this game was new, like, it took me like two months to crap 100% this, and it turned out my cart was bugged. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's right, these guys can't die like this. Because, like, I get 100% on a level, you'd see 100%, and then, like, it would go, Hey, you have 99. It's like, I have 100. But yeah, this game is... it's tricky. It's not a... it's not a cakewalk, but I compare this game to, like... To every Yoshi game coming out now, it's like, it's... This is, like, my high standard. This is what I hold every Mario game or, you know, Yoshi's Island game coming out to now. 
and unfortunately I just haven't found anything that's that's stayed up to it like a challenge. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> it's like, uh oh. Okay, I guess I gotta go back. Yeah, you know, Wooly's World, I played that on an emulator, on the Wii U emulator, Simu, and I just, it just felt too easy again for me. I was just like, eh, I don't know. Stay away from me, jerks. Yeah, Yoshi's Story, I think, was the 64 game, I think it was. That was just, like, this is clearly a children's game for, like, three-year-olds. And then they had the Wii U demo for the new game came out. Or not Wii U, but the uh, Switch demo that I played the same night that I played that uh, new mech game that turned out to be kind of a disappointment. It's, I can't remember what it was, like, Demon X Machina, or Mich I can't remember what it was called, to be honest. It, it left that good of an impression on me, I'm just like, meh. It's like, I'm actually, I mean, keep in mind I'm also, like I said, on oxycodone right now, but it's like, this game is pretty challenging. Especially having not played it and getting older, my skills deteriorating, but yeah, it's, it's no cakewalk. I wasn't really too much of a sports person, as, you know, I've joked multiple times, like, go sports ball team, but uh, I remember really liking NHL 93. And uh, the Super Tecmo Bowl games, those were a lot of fun to play. And uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball wasn't too bad. If you've played two-player or home run derby, but if you play against a computer, it's a big old cheater. I don't know how Elrock can play that game and just destroy it. So it's like, it's designed to literally cheat and rubber band on you. What is this door? But I have to say, probably like the best sports game I've played that's not a simulation still is NFL Blitz. Especially when you play that two player or more, that just becomes a riot. It's a lot of fun to play. Like my brother and I would both pick the Chicago Bears and you'd just be running along and like all of a sudden you just fumble the ball out of nowhere. Nobody around you, you just suddenly drop the ball. So you're still on the baby's side, Yoshi baby. What? Okay, I guess he's trying to be like hipster. Then get a load of this. This is another little trick of the Super FX2 chip. The color blending. And then the sprite increase. 
It's like things you really appreciate now, like later, you understand like how much went into this to get the stuff done. It's like it was neat at the time, but if we didn't, I don't remember thinking like it was groundbreaking, like, oh my gosh, this is so impressive. I just remember thinking, well, that's cool, it's like it got really huge. That would be cool. It'd be interesting to see. I would I'd definitely like to see that. I mean, because you have like Mario Strikers, which is like a soccer game. Hold on. Sorry about that. Suddenly developed an itch on the side of my face. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Everyone has a fetish origin story. That's not one of mine. I'm not going to hear the kink shame you, Morg, but that's the reason why I'm breaking up with your mother. I mean, it, it's entirely you. Yes, 2D was abandoned for low-end 3D. I know that you have a, a Sega Saturn pet, but you don't have, like, any games or anything for it. Really, really need to change that sometime because the Saturn is such an amazing 2D powerhouse, as you're no doubt aware of, but... It's, it, I mean, like, everything went for 3D at the time, it was the big it thing, so you, you miss out a lot of 2D greatness platformers. Uh, one of the, yeah, Symphony of the Night on Saturn is, is special, just because I understand the reason why it's the way it is, but it, it, difference in polygons, you know, Saturn rendered everything in squares, while this PlayStation did triangles. Also, the game, the resolution for the game is like 256. And the lowest the Saturn could go was 320, so things just got whacked out of shape, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, the Saturn was an absolute beast for 2D games. And a lot of games just sadly never came out here in the States, but... Which is why I have so many Japanese games for the Sega Saturn, but... It's, it's definitely something to look into and pick it up if you're a fan of it. The other night I was streaming Nintendo 64 games. I did uh, Pilot Wings and, and Mario, but I also did uh, Mischief Makers as well for a little bit near the end. I didn't play a whole lot, but that really stuck out for me because it was a 2D game. You know, on the Nintendo 64 where almost everything was like 3D games at the time. It's like you had to have a 3D game. You can't do 2D anymore. And then and all of a sudden here's this like amazing 2D platformer. No, unfortunately. I think Sil Radiant Silvergun's still a ridiculous amount of money. Um, it's still hovering around 250 300 bucks on average. But yeah, Radiant Gun Silvergun is still insane. I found that like a lot of times when a port comes out, that it's just, it does not lower the price of the actual unit. And that's like the hope everyone's like, oh, maybe now it'll be reasonable price. It just doesn't work that way because the actual item itself is still low production numbers. But what really frustrated me with the uh, Sega Saturn games is uh, when they go up for like no price, for like for no reason whatsoever, like the Retro Bubble will do that. But like one of the games I wanted to buy was, ah, oh, crap. Nope, too late. One of the games I wanted to play or buy was Street Fighter Zero Three or Street Fighter Alpha Three, as it's called here in the states. And for the longest time, the game was eighty dollars. It was like, okay, there's still plenty of copies in Japan. It's not a problem. And then literally overnight, it went from eighty dollars to three hundred for like no reason whatsoever. It, it stayed there for like the longest time, and I still think it's ridiculously overpriced um, at that at that price range. Still, I think it's still up around there. It just, it's one of those things that's like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you can still go a lot of places in Japan and, like, uh, Super Potato. I've had friends stop by uh, Super Potato, which is kind of overpriced now. I'm trying to think of the other Japanese places. There's stores that they have in there. And 
like buyback and stuff like that, but it's just like they can still buy it there in store for around a hundred bucks. And it's still trying to sell for online for ridiculous. It just doesn't make sense at all. Like why it's just magically overnight it just shot up. Like if you go on like pricecharting.com, you'll you literally see like one day it's like 80 bucks and then it just jumps to like 300. Like everyone suddenly decided, oh, now it's $300. I mean, retro collecting is like a finicky thing. I can understand if it's legitimate low numbers, but then you have like people who just decided like arbitrary, like this game is now, you know, millions of dollars. Yeah, and the big thing for me, like, for that is with Earthbound. I mean, I remember when people couldn't give away Earthbound. It was like, people didn't want it at all. I remember seeing the special edition of the game, which had the guidebook with it, like, selling for, like, $10 in shops. I didn't have, I didn't care about it at the time. If I knew it was going to be, like, this overpriced, I would have bought one copy just for my collection, which I probably would have sold back then because of my depression. Uh, and just one to hold on to, but I mean, Earthbrown is not a rare game, but everyone treats it like it is, and it sells for ridiculous amounts of money. I don't even think it's a good game, to be honest. I, it's mediocre to me. It's it's not bad, but it's not like this, like, oh my god, it's the best RPG ever, because I'm like, no, you need to play Chrono Trigger and Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy, any of the Final Fantasies, really, you know, the old ones. But it, it's not a rare game, but everyone treats it like it's a limited run rare production game. It's just not. Like, uh, like a limited, like an actual limited production game like Hagane, that's understandable uh, why you could have higher prices for it. I'm trying to think of the other game that would be really high up there for rarity. Um, Arrow Fighters. The first Arrow Fighters for Super Nintendo, extremely low limited run. I think only 10,000 copies of that game were made. I know a guy who sold his copy to put a decent of down payment on his house. I mean, that cart's a lot of money. The most he ever sold the game for was the big box XCOM for PlayStation 1. I wonder how much that costs. XCOM, PS1, big box. Or long box, I think it's called. Complete in box, long box. Well, I hate to tell you more, but there's a guy selling it right now for 36 bucks. Let's see, Enemy Unknown, short one. I'm not sure if that's an expansion for it. I don't know a whole lot about XCOM. But it seems like it's probably a rare game because I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of the PlayStation versions, and the uh, Enemy Unknown is like 65 bucks. This is what I was able to find. Yeah, it may have just dropped down. I mean, sometimes games will rise and fall. Uh, let's see, was it Mega Man X2 Super Nintendo? God, the soundtrack is so freaking good. Let's go, eBay. Giddy up. Yeah, I love it. People are like, oh yeah, Mega Man X2, 48 bucks. I was like, that's a repro. Um, so let's see, that's currently still selling for, actually it's around 80 bucks right now, because I remember that used to be over 100, and that's probably dropped about 20 bucks. So I managed to pick mine up about four years ago for $70, which is a steal of a deal, because it was selling for, like I said, about $100 at the time. And Chrono Trigger, good god, I have no idea what that's going for these days. Yeah, Kelowna, a hundred bucks. I'd imagine that. I can, I can see that happening. I mean, that's why, like, I'm for emulation. Especially when you get, like, games that are just, like, ridiculously priced for... Just even for, like, normal things. I mean, like, for the Saturn, you have a game called, like, Psycho Psychic Killer Tomorrow, I believe it is. And that game is... It sells for, like, 600 bucks. Like, Final Fight... Um, whatever the, the Saturn fighting game is there that they came out with, that's, like, over 600 bucks. Yeah, I just have the... 
I think I still have the poster that came with it the original time, the first time I had it. And then, pardon me, I think I remember buying it off of, hit the wrong button. I think I bought it off eBay. I think I got it for around eighty dollars. I think. I remember, I was finding like ridiculously good deals. Like a lot of people, are like holy crap, eighty bucks. But like when you see what this game starts going for, it's it's not too bad. Last time I checked, Chrono Trigger for Super Nintendo was like 120, 130. Chrono Trigger. Yeah, it's still. I love how you suddenly see like. It's three hundred dollars for no reason, or two hundred forty. It's like you're never gonna sell that at all, ever. When you look at all the other carts, it's around. From where I'm seeing, kind of taking just an average off the top of my head, just loose carts by itself between a hundred to hundred twenty bucks. And then you see like some idiot who's like, "Oh, it's like I'm gonna sell this for three hundred dollars." It's like if you see everyone else selling it for this range, and it's not complete in blocks or anything, you need to have realistic expectations. You know, it's like Chrono Trigger is an amazing RPG that I tell everybody, it doesn't matter how you play it, just play it. But don't spend $300 for the game that's not worth $300. It's like, in this case, like, I would say, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of owning the actual games themselves. But in this case, if you, you know, emulate it however you want, buy the DS version. If you have a Nintendo DS, you don't mind playing it on a smaller screen, play that version. It's great as well. You know, it's, it's one of the reasons why, like, emulation is why I love this little Super Nintendo classic. You know, you get all the good games here that you don't have to spend a fortune on, because I can't remember... I think I did the math, like, all the different games here that you'd have to pay out of a pocket to buy, versus just buying this. Like I said, it's, it's an emulated system, but you just save so much more money doing it this way. You gotta really get actually have to get like a certain height requirement to do the bound the uh, stop on this. Wow, I forgot this game. I didn't. I don't remember this game having like this level of like Mega Man like refill. You know, like Mega Man games are always famous for like, okay, just go off the screen just briefly, and uh, all the bad guys are gonna come back. Like I don't remember that being a, that big of a problem on this game. But here we are. Yeah, but I mean, FPGA still has its limits, though. I mean, that's the problem. Until you can start doing, like, the big hitters, like PlayStation, Saturn, I would, I would die for for that. You know, it's like they can barely get, like, Super Nintendo and, you know, Sega Genesis running, which is fine. But, I mean, it's still expensive. Emulation's still cheaper at this point. Flashcards are nice. Like I said, but I like, like, if you want to go with the emulation route where you have everything at your disposal, that's fine. But for me, I like to also physically own the games if I can, on top of it. Okay, step on when you find them, secret entrance. Yeah, it should be a lot better, I agree. But then, like, we have stores like where I'm at. Uh, we have an ex a place in Erie called The Exchange, which is like the only, like, retro place you can find games. Oh man, this digger thing sucks. But they are just like a complete and total ripoff. Every once in a while you can find a really good deal, but we're talking rare. This is the place that I always, like, slam because they have... They still, to this day, are trying to sell a reprint Greatest Hits version of Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation used for $100. They legitimately think it's a $100 game. I'm like, it's a Greatest Hits reprint of a used game for PlayStation. It's worth $10, bucks, if that. 
It's like, you're fooling nobody. They're like, um, no, it's, it's run by hipsters, too. So, like, we know exactly how much these games are worth. We know everything is in here. So, one time I was in the store, I'm like, okay, can, like, I said they had a... Uh, a master system for Sega Genesis. No, no, it wasn't a master system. It was a turbo. It was a Turbo Graphic 16. I'm like, hey, can I see that TG16? They're like, the guy's like in horror. He's like, uh, is this it? Pointing to him, I'm like, no, it's it's that's not it. It's over to the right more. It's like I had to like walk him over to him. I'm like, do you want me to just go behind the counter and take a look at it? <laughs> this is like, and they wanted to sell it for like 200 bucks. It's like, no. We had 500 used copies of Final Fantasy VII GameStop any second back in the day. Exactly. I said, this, this store up here is ridiculous. It's like, they they think that everything is ridiculously, like, super rare. Which is a shame, but every once in a while, you'll find an actually legitimate good deal. It's very hard, but I mean, like, I have a complete inbox Super Scope 6 that I bought for 35 bucks from that store. Um, I bought, gosh. I bought Silent Scope, the white rifle for the Xbox with the game for I think it was $30 again. It's like every once in a while you can find an amazing deal that like some idiot hasn't like caught onto you like one of the uh, hipsters there hasn't caught onto the fact yet but it's like it, it's getting harder and harder to do with them. But it's just things like that that drive me up the wall. When you have, like, it's it's not worth that much, and then people just think it's arbitrary numbers. They decide, like, I, this game has to be worth, like, millions of dollars. It's like, no, it's not. Like I said, I was harping on uh, Earthbound earlier. You know, that's the biggest example. Like, you couldn't give that game away 20 years ago. There's an overabundance of them. They made too many of those carts, and nobody cared about the game. And then all of a sudden, it became popular. Yeah, there's tons of copies in circulation. And, you know, also, like, switch up topics, like, too, with, like, Final Fantasy. I've talked to so many people, like, Final Fantasy VIII sucks, it's the worst one ever. I'm like, why? Like, it doesn't follow the story of Seven. I'm like, okay, well, it's apparent that, one, Seven was the first game you ever played for Final Fantasy, and two, at that point in time, none of the games were tied in story-wise to each other. It was until 10-2, where you had actually a continuation which is a really bizarre game. And then 13 did it and everything else. But it's like, I get it. It's your first RPG. I can understand why you think it was great, but for me, it just wasn't the best game in the world. There are other great ones. You can... Final Fantasy IV, which I actually remember, like, nothing about. Final Fantasy V, I remember enjoying. Butts was the guy's name. And then you had uh, Six, which I think is, like, the pinnacle for the Final Fantasy series. Eight was a lot of fun. I do enjoy Eight. Nine, I remember next to nothing other than that they're like thieves and that there's a play in the beginning. They're like actors and that's just about it. That's all I remember pretty much. Man, the music is so awesome for this game. Alright then. There we go. Oh yes, yeah, the water bill and everyone will die. Restaurant's a good solid platform and worth a zillion bucks. There's the key. Think we will pick prices based on quality. Yeah. Okay, I've read that already. Grab more coins to your enemy before the time reaches zero. Thank goodness you don't have Yoshi you don't have Mario on your back in this part. Be agony.
Yay, I win. So what was Panic Restaurant? This sounds familiar, but I, I can't recall it. Panic Restaurant, Nintendo. Cannot be tamed and did a review of it. Let's check out gameplay real quick. Taito. It looks like a late NES game. It looks pretty colorful. Panic Restaurant, NES. eBay, oh, only 400 bucks, I mean. I mean, I'm using my copy of Flintstones as a uh, you know, paperweight and sometimes a beer coaster. Using it to clean out my, kitter, my litter box. I mean, it's not worth anything, right? It's like, I know, I don't, like, it's really weird. I do not own a Nintendo at all, like an original NES. Never got around to it. And then, like, the retro bubble happened, so then, like, all the games became stupidly expensive, and then you have assholes like Pat the NES Punk, who's just a, an asshole to begin with. You know, jacking up games on top of it. So, it's like, I just did not get into the NES, and now it's like, the games are just way too expensive. Alright, let's do this. Get dizzy! Oh, that's a weird emulation glitch. The green, the uh, screen is not supposed to flash white. <laughs> but yeah, this is actually, it's not a camera trick here, the, the ground actually is morphing. It's another sweet little addition thanks to the FX2 chip. Yeah, like, you'd have, like, certain games like Call of Duty, or Call of Duty 4, which actually would play... It looked like the ship, like, the first level was rocking, but actually it was just a, uh, a camera trick to make it seem like everything was moving, that everything was stationary, but this part, the ground is actually deforming. Yeah, it's the only thing I've found wrong with it so far. I'm just waiting now for the inevitable person to show up and start yelling about... Retro Pie is the best thing ever! I mean, it's so easy to buy a Retro Pie, why don't you do this? You gotta buy all the parts, program it, do everything else, buy the adapters. You spent $250 by the time you're done instead of buying an $80 NES Classic and hacking it. Yep, I am playing on the SNES Classic. <laughs> Pardon me. Which has been modified! It is. It's pretty neat. It's a neat little system, and it cracks me up still that it does PlayStation 1 games better than the PlayStation Classic. Right, but the thing is, though, how much does the Mr. cost, though? I mean, last time I looked into it, it's like 200 bucks. And that's the thing, it's like, you gotta think, like, price as well. You know, it's like, sure, you can have, like, Mr. be, like, super accurate and do all these different things in FPGAs, but at the end of the day, like, you're either hardcore dedicated to it, or you just want something that will work and play. Like, if, if you're just looking for something that you can easily hack, Without a lot of effort, there's lots of YouTube tutorials on this here. Get yourself a Super Nintendo Classic if you can get your hands on one. It's really easy to do. Yeah, what I really, really want, and once again hate being unemployed and broke, is the Sega Saturn controllers that are being put out right now that they have pre-orders going for because they're making ones that they go basically have USB in so you can do this on your computer or RetroPie or whatever you want to use and then they actually have ones that they're making for the actual system 
It's like, that is amazing. That's what I'm dying to get my hands on. It's one of each I would love. Especially for PC, because I like to do a lot of my stuff, but, you know, emulated. But when I get a retro tank, I want to do a lot of more Saturn streaming through the actual hardware itself. So, like, and my controllers aren't the best because they're, like, 25 years old. And the fact that they're making, like, brand new controllers for it and supposed to be really good quality, that has me hyped up. And I'm hoping that what the high demand they have right now is that they're going to be making more in the future. The block to right with the egg and some platforms will flip. Is there any egg dispensers around? Really, dude? <laughs> the iPhone classic. Play it all day long, man. It's gonna be great. Oops. Off that one. Trying to do like a shallow jump. I just find it funny, especially with, like cell phones, how way things are going now. They started off really huge, then they got smaller, and now they're starting to get huge again. And then you had flip phones, and flip phones went away. Like we started going large and small, and now we're getting large again. Flip phones were like the ultimate design, and then they got rid of them for smartphones, and now they're bringing back flip phones again. Like Samsung has a new one that's coming out, and it is a $2,000 phone. And it flips open with the screen, which is pretty wild to see. But it's got like three screens. You got the one on the front there, and then you open it. And it's got the two screens inside to make it like the size of almost like an iPad, I think. It's got like two batteries in it. it costs two thousand bucks. It's Nimix. You've missed me ranting about overpriced games, cell phones costing way too much money, all sorts of fun stuff. So I need to flip that switch up top. Slowly remembering the game. Yep, Super Mario World 2. Yoshi's Island, or if you're playing the Japanese game, Yossi Island. Don't know why. Actually, I do know why, but it's kind of a, a different change. Go. Really? Come on, game. It's like fell down the slot. Gaming skills are nowhere what they used to be. Well, it's just like, it's kind of like a coloring book style because it's baby Mario wanting to be kind of like kid looking, but it's 
Very challenging game. I can see why they did it, but then they went kind of too far with things. Then you had like the Yoshi's game for Nintendo 64, which was like literally a game for like three or four year olds. You can't die. You just go through and collect fruit. There's like no time limit. It's like, oh man, this game is an abomination. Then you have like the newer games like uh, Woolly World, which is basically like a yarn. And you have the new one, which is like cardboard. So they all have like a gimmick now. Go. I just found like Willy World just for the Wii U just to be too simplistic, too easy. It's like I have not found a Yoshi game that has this level of challenge since this game. And I've held this game as a comparison like to everything to like the art the way of measuring like, okay, is this does the new games hold up? And I had high hopes for the new one on the Switch, it's just like, oh, this is going to be another cakewalk game. Cute little Yoshi, does Baby Mario want to go to Bowser's castle? I'll take him there in a hurry. By murdering him by proxy on you. The giant flan. Another hopeless, defenseless slime thing murdered. I remember on CRT televisions, it didn't look too sharp. <laughs> so sometimes it looked like Mario was giving you the finger. It wasn't paid off, you jerk! Alright, so the game should have saved in theory. Let's test that. Aha! For me. It did! Yay! Let's see what else we have on here. So, uh, one of the things I noticed, because this is a modified Super Nintendo Classic, we'll call it there. So I have some duplicate games. Yay! Speaking of Earthbound, I wonder if this is worth hundreds of dollars. But, uh, actually I have some duplicates, like I have Donkey Kong Country right here, and then I have it in my modded games too. So, oops! Yep, this is a Super Nintendo Classic or Mini SNES. So I've gone through and put lots of different games on here. Basically all the games that I own personally and then a lot more that I don't. Like Final, Fan Final Fight 3 is a lot of money now too. Yep, so I hacked it to put these ROMs in. It's not too hard to do. Uh, there's lots of different videos on YouTube which can walk you right through to do it. It's very simple. You can either find, like, a ROM dump together or add your own. Uh, speaking of expensive games, Hagani, that's another one. Hyperzone, okay, do you have... I don't know why I have this on here. This game's not good at all. Jim Power! 
Jungle Book. Kendo Rage was a lot of fun. Killer Instinct, King of Dragons, Kirby Games. Hey, somebody's here game. Ah, you vote for that, do you? Joke's on you, I have it on here. Or is the joke is on me? Yeah, so this is literally, this is either one of, this was either the last Super Nintendo game to come out or one of the last to come out. And I own the card of this. It's kind of pricey, it's a little up there, but uh, it is very, very hard. Yeah, it's like pretty much this game was designed for Forte. It's like the easier mode. Or base, as they call them in the West. So this is Rockman and base. Or Forte. I remember when I found this like on emulation like around 2003, 2004, I think it was. I was like, holy crap, they came out with a Super... with a Mega Man game for a Super Nintendo that I've never heard of. But yeah, base can... Or Forte can shoot in seven directions, just not straight down. He can't duck, but he's got a double jump. I don't think I can change controls on this. No, you can't. That's the downside for this. They can't customize your controls. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I have the actual card of this, and I thought I had 100%, but I think it turned out, last time I looked at it, it's like, I think it's 97 or 98% complete I had. But this game is... No joke, it's a pretty hard. And they also borrowed a lot of assets from this, from uh, Mega Man 8, of all places. So you'll have, like, some... You'll have some bosses that are repeats. Like, you'll have them, like, Tengu Man. He's in this. He's also in Mega Man 8. And then you have a couple other stuff as well, I'm trying to think of. Like, a lot of assets were reused from that game. So, like, if I had any type of Super Nintendo programming skills, I would love to see a demake of Mega Man 8 on the Super Nintendo. Uh, because, like I said, a lot of the assets still work in, are, are in this game. I mean, you could pull it off with some modification. I'm pretty sure you could make a pretty good demake. Now, they did release this game. Oh, by the way, let me know if I need to change up the audio. I don't know how loud or quiet it is, but I had to turn this down when it started because it was blasting. But, um, crap for what I was going to say. But, yeah, this game is <laughs> very, very hard. I remember the, um, the original guy who wanted to do this game was like, hell, you know, Mega Man 8 might be too hard, so let's make a game for your little kids. You might, you know, or brother or sisters, you might still be playing the Super Nintendo, and it's like the hardest Mega Man game to come out. Yeah, and, um, what was it? Okay, now remember, this game actually did come out for the Game Boy Advance, and it is terrible. It's like, they didn't change the resolution, like, for whatever reason, when games came out for the Game Boy Advance, everything was super zoomed in. Instead of like making the sprites smaller, or pulling back the screen a little bit, being proportional, sure you have smaller characters, but you can see what's going on. It's like super zoomed in. So you, you don't have a lot of room, room to move. You just get creamed by everything. It makes a hard game impossible. And then you got weird sound issues on top of it, so. There are fan translations of this game available, so... And they're not by DJAP, so there's no ridiculous swearing out of nowhere. Yeah, so Mega Man 8 would run super slow, tons of sprites on screen. But, I mean, that's the thing, like, you'd have to make an adjustment for it, I mean... I mean, that's usually what D-Makes are, anyway. It's like you get, like, an adjustment for... Say crap, whoa, I almost died on that one. But, I mean, you get, like... You have to make compromises, of course. It's not going to fit entirely on here, but... You would have to make changes, but I would love to see somebody do that. 
I think the two games that you could probably do a demake for for a Super Nintendo and have it work with like borrowing sprites from other games would be Mega Man 8 and um, Mega Man X4. If you just keep like zero, I think it'd be a lot easier to do. But I think that those are two games you might be able to pull off in some sense, like redone for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. They felt bad for kids who didn't have a PlayStation or Sega Saturn, so... It's like, here, this is a game that they can play on your older systems. It's like, and it's literally the hardest Mega Man game out there. Oh, this is a translated one. I thought I had just a straight Japanese copy. Stop there, King. What are you doing in the museum? I finally got all the Robot Data CDs. Remember when CDs were something? Uh, quite the time. Right, and it just, it did not work. But I remember, like, the worst point, for, worst port of a game to the Game Boy Advance was Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic 1, oh man, that is, that is legendarily bad. This info will create a powerful army that even Dr. Light could stop. Hey, who's this? Another pest? I'm out of here! No, stop there! Stop there, evildoer! Doer who is not good but does bad things? Good nod, Dab. Good, let's play. Good job, Proto Man. You you really stopped him there. Feel proud? You know, you had a shield, you could have jumped out of the way. So that's King. This may be fun, as <laughs> he's watching like Proto Man die in front of him. Hey scumbag, get out of my way now. Yeah, it should be mentioned that like base or forte, depending on whatever you want to call him, is Dr. Wily's creation in like to compete with Mega Man, so he's evil. You insist on getting yourself killed, eh? Well, maybe he'll give you a hand. Ha ha ha. Yeah, this is another character from... Literally with the same sprites from Mega Man 8. I've heard people say that this part's impossible, like with, with Forte or Base. I'm like, I'll just keep... I'll call him Base. Just keep it easier, but it's like... You just stand here and shoot at an angle. It's like, it's not hard at all, really, as I keep getting hit. Just cheese him out. It's like, do you not realize you have directional shots? Sure, we'll save. So it's weird, this is, I guess the ROM that I have on here is like a partial translation, because I've seen a translated ROM of this that everything is translated, including like the menu options and your skills and everything, so you know exactly what you're buying and what you're saving too. Let's see, this guy's Rigo. Cold Man! Gotta say, I do enjoy the music in this game. Die, Fluffy Bunny! I was where I was working at uh, AOL at the time, and like I said, a guy I knew started getting into emulation, and he was a big Mega Man fan. I'm like, did you ever hear a game called like, you know, Rock Band and Forte? He's like, no, what's that? I'm like, it's a Mega Man game that didn't come out for the Super Nintendo here in the states. He's like, what? I was like, oh yeah. So I, I, I like I gave it to him like on a CD, I think it was. It was like it was an emulator because he he had just heard about emulation, but now everything is set up. So, so I gave him a disc that had the M ZSNES and the ROM here, and he's like, that was amazing, and the game is stupidly hard. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's way too hard. Yeah, I've worked for a lot of companies, a lot of evil empire companies, as I call it. Worked for AOL, Walmart, Verizon, Time Warner. Direct TV, which is the worst freaking job I've worked my entire life, which is why I went back to school to 
get into IT. That was the that was the job that broke the camel's back. And uh, it's actually kind of funny, but if you ever watch Mr. Radon on Twitch, um, he was actually one of my quote unquote bosses for DirecTV. He was like a guy above me on the phones. They were basically took escalated calls. So it's like, it's kind of funny because I remember I talked to him for a while. I was like, wait a minute. And it's like, he's like, oh yeah, I work for that company too. I'm like, I'm like, do you go by, you know, so-and-so on the, on the phone? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I talked to you earlier today. He's like, I thought that was you. <laughs> it's like, funny. So how's the back today? I am on a lot of painkillers, so it's starting to wear off, unfortunately, because I'm starting to feel the, you know, the jabbing coming back, but it's not doing well. So while base here uh, does have a lot more freedom of movement, his attacks are far weaker. I, I forgot what the exact ratio is, but I think it's like four or five shots to one normal shot from Mega Man. So I mean, Mega Man doesn't have the double jump or the seven-way fire, but you're weaker. You have weaker weapons as a result. So there is a trade-off to it. wasn't great. Hey, it's Fico. How's it going, buddy? So, I have a question to ask you, Fico. I saw the other day you learned how to play Ultra Street Fighter 4 with one hand on the controller or Zangief. Can you do a spinning pile driver with that one hand? Or is it like that just out of the question? There's a power shot upgrade. Yeah, it's like, I think with the power shot though, it only kicks in like when your life is low. So you have to like be straddling like a, a damage like percentage, like two or three health bars left and then your power goes up to the roof. But, I mean, you're like literally like one hit away from death at that point usually. Okay, it's just an extra life. Also, Fico, another question. Did you ever get around to watching uh, either Darker Than Black or Black Lagoon episodes that put up on G-Drive for you? Because if you have, and if you want to see more, let me know. I'll drop some more in for you. I just didn't want to flood everything all at once. Yep, you can do pile drivers. Jeez, that's crazy. Oh, okay, so there is one. It's been a while since I've sat down and played through this entire thing. Like I said the last time I did that was when I bought the actual cart of this game, so we're talking like four years ago. This fight takes forever. <laughs> And then when you hit, like, bad guys, too, like, this boss, they just take forever. Like, here's one shot. You see how long you flash into invincibility frames. It's like, oh my god, just die already, please. Okay, just curious if you have or not, because I know you were, like, you were sick for a while, and then you had your cousin's, I think it was your cousin's wedding. So, understandably, you were busy. Get off me, please.
Yay, finally dead. Oh, that takes forever. Like I said, no biggie, just curious is all. And then he just shoots into the sky for reasons unknown. Maybe because he's so full of rage. It's like, why was I programmed to feel pain and rage? Let me update my uh, stream title real quick. Hardest Mega Man game ever. You got Ice Wall! Override? Yes. For me. Welcome to my shop. I'm helping you for some reason, even though I'm with the good guys. Okay. Are you having trouble? Maybe I can help. Are you having trouble in the bathroom? We got some extra colon blow. Let's see. TV phone. <laughs> Call roll for a device. Yeah. Mega Man! Mega Man! No thanks. Uh, let's see. This is nice. This absorbs the damage to spikes one time. Uh, teleport, you have a beaten stage. That's pretty good to have. You get power ups, your weapons are auto recharge. Or 20. That's good to have, but. No, this is a. This is called. Uh, well, depends on where you are. If it's Japan, it's Rockman and Forte. Or in the West, Mega Man and Base. This is a Super Nintendo game that did not come out outside of Japan until it got ported to the Game Boy Advance a couple of years ago. And it is stupidly hard. It's literally one of the last Super Nintendo games to ever be released. It came out in 1998. No, I want to buy it. Yeah, this is... This game is stupidly hard. It's, it's not fair hard. Oh, it's been tasked before, I'm sure people could file sort of crazy stuff. Yeah, so I really need to update my ROM of this, because this is Roll. And like I said, there's updated ROMs of this that have everything translated, like all this information about her is translated. But apparently I have an incomplete one. Oh, speedrunning this game is a nightmare. Whenever I see somebody speedrun it, it's like I watch because it's impressive to see. It is not easy. When you see speedrunners continually die to this game, you know something's up. You know it's hard. It's not intentional deaths. It's like, crap, the game killed me, you know? Let's see, what hit me? Missile out of nowhere. Yeah, this stage is very hard, but it's the next one in progression. And then, of course, later on you have the... Yeah, like this big giant like enemy, which is once again from Mega Man 8, which a lot of this game, like I said earlier, uses a lot of assets from Mega Man 8. But, uh... Yeah, you have this guy come up who's a character from Mega Man 8, and it just fills the entire screen with like fire, which is like one hit death. Isn't this fun with lower health damage, like lower power guns? Eventually he'll die. Or die from exhaustion from throwing those things. There we go, all right. Juicy CD. 
and run out of here. So yeah, like I said, if you've played Mega Man 8, you're going to notice a lot of enemies are reused in this game. Like, these guys are reused as well. Oh yeah, I will definitely be using it just because, like, I, I suck at this game. So, <laughs> it won't be like, hey, wow, he's, he's doing low damage. It's like, it's not on purpose. Yeah, I'd die getting that. Yeah, I think we're about to get to the outside part. Nope, not yet. Okay, Magilla Gorilla, I need you to die, please. God, I forgot how weak your buster is in this game. I see you get like rapid fire in seven directions, but lord help you, yeah, it's underpowered. And this weapon that I'm using right now breaks the game wide open. Like, if you've ever seen a task, well, even just a speed run, you can use it to push yourself and, like, clip into the walls and just zip around all over the place. It's really awesome to watch. Especially, like I said, tasks of this are really fun. Oh god, this room. I don't think I've ever seen a speedrunner get through this without getting nailed. Like, I'm just wanting health, please. Give me lots of money, though. You see the problem here? There we go. Jeez. Okay, so now I'm finally outside. Can't get that just yet. Oof. So yeah, so now we're going to start encountering the big giant flame thing that's going to put everything on fire and one hit kills you. By the way, your, like, your special bar for your weapons goes down super fast. It doesn't refill, so like if you die, you are stuck. I mean, you will literally like fail a mission, like uh, trying to beat a bad guy. Trying to beat a boss is just not possible. Just jerk. Oh, great, just killed me one hit anyway. So yeah, you take a lot of damage, and it's just... This game is brutally hard. It's, like, statistically hard. It's like, right now I have half my health gone. And it's still lit everything on fire. Perfect. Yeah, this is... I would say Lost Levels is actually easier than this game. Uh, like I said, this is this is not an easy level to begin with, but then you have like all the other nonsense thrown in. 
I said, once again, Half-Life gone, just trying to get past these guys. Because you are just so ridiculously underpowered, and everyone does so much damage. Even when you play as Mega Man, the game still dishes out an unfair amount of damage. Slow dragon. Fast dragon. Alright, so now I've made it to the boss, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna use my special power on him right now, but what you're supposed to do is put down the ice wall and push him into the spikes. Ah, oh, crap, it was my last life anyway. Oh yeah, I know I did. I'm missing lots of things. Ugh. Take that. Alright, let's see what else we got. SOS, another game I want to own is very rare, very expensive. Stunt Race FX, a lot of fun. Ah, gonna pop and crack everything. All right, so let's play a Mega Man game that I actually enjoy. Something that's not impossibly hard. Okay. Shoot lemons. This is one of those games that, like, I don't know what it was wrong with me, but like when it came out, I was kind of ambivalent to it. And I was like, eh, it's all right. It's a Mega Man game. It's not that great, but it's like, what the hell, this is like a great game. Dash. Put that to R. Put that to mono. No, never. So how did that actually go, though? I mean, X2's pretty tricky. It's not a, not too bad of a game, but I mean, it's not too punishing, I don't think, until the later parts without upgrades, but I could be completely wrong on that. Yeah, Sigma would be very hard. Man, I love the soundtrack of this game. just flickered. Yeah, I can do that. So I can feel rain, but it's like, I guess it's here. Let me take a look at the radar real quick. Oh yeah, baby. That's uh, rain. Wind gusts over 50, because I was hearing wind earlier, so looks like that storm's hit. I'll probably be done streaming probably about 20 minutes or so. I'm guessing probably 20 30 minutes. Sliding down. 
much as like Aaron Hansen is a total tool, I mean he actually did like a really good sequelitis on Mega Man, like how this opening level teaches you like everything you need to know about how to play the game in his first level without like teaching you, without like holding your hand like you can slide down walls, press this button to slide down walls while you know, sticking on it. It's like you just find out by dropping down naturally when the first guy destroys the bridge and you're forced to like jump against the wall and go, oh, I can jump up it, you know, I have, I can wall climb, I can slide down stuff, you know. It, like, the, it's still like a master class in like how to teach you how to play a game in the intro level. It's like very well thought out. I should probably hit the jump button. That might help me. Might. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. I'm gonna have to try it again just to make sure. Dropship's gonna come. Let's bring all the cars. Three of them. Now, actually, oh, it's two. That was three. But um, the neat thing about this game is that I have a game genie, and you can actually there's a code for this game where you have the infinite lives. Like, basically, your energy doesn't run out. You're invincible. You cannot defeat Sigma. You have to turn off your Game Genie if you have it on, if you're starting a brand new fresh game, because you'll be trapped in this fight forever. It is He has no points to kill. He is immortal. Although sometimes the game can glitch and screw up and kill you in this fight. Hey, Boba Fett! You worthless piece of scrap metal, did you think you could defeat me? Where's the Sarlacc pit? Push him in! You know, I think I've noticed before, but like Zero's jewel on his head like glows when he's charging up a shot. Guess I'm not powerful enough to defeat him. He's like, that's right, you weakling. You shouldn't expect to defeat him. He is designed to be a war machine. Remember, you have not reached full power yet. If you use all the abilities you are designed with, you should become stronger. You may even become as powerful as I. <gasps> Scout ahead and collect as much information on Sigma's fortress as I can. I'll meet up with you when I get there. See you later. I have it for the PSP. It's been a while, been a while since I've played it. Pardon me. I didn't like it. It really threw me off. I mean, they redesigned the stages and then, like, they also moved where all your power-ups are, too. Like, oh, cool, I can just go to Chill Penguin, and it's like, your leg like, upgrade isn't there. I'm like, okay, this game's gonna cause problems. Foo-foo running through the forest. Then he gets shot in the head. By a robot from the future. Okay, he can shoot back. It's fair. It's on. Now you think I have, like... It might be able to play, like, Maverick Hunter X on emulation. I don't think I have it. Take a look real quick. 
emulation folder. SP. Oh, I do have it. Yep, so I have the I have the game downloaded, but you just have to play it through emulation instead. It's like I have a, my PSP, unfortunately, the battery was like defective. It's actually started to like rupture. So I was like, oh, that's crazy. I had to throw that thing out. So if I ever want to play the PSP again, the actual system, I'll have to track down a battery on eBay. Oh, this one's like, hey, dummy, you can't miss this upgrade. Yeah, it, exactly what happened to mine. Like, I was, I found my PSP, like, I was unpacking stuff, and I was like, okay, it's my PSP, and, like, what happened to the back battery case? Like, I could see, like, the, the case had popped off the back, and, like, the battery was, like, just literally, like, twice over bulged. I was like, whoa, okay. That's scary as hell. So I guess it's a common thing for... PSP batteries to go through, I guess? Seems you're destined to fight. By the way, I died like a hundred years ago, so um, hopefully this capsule is in the middle of like an Arby's parking lot, because that'd be really weird. I mean, how did he know, like, these are pre-recorded messages, how did he know that X was going to have to go through this stuff like eight times and hide all these different capsules all over the place. What makes it like didn't find just a capsule from X4 or something like that and now? You know? It's like, okay, you've somehow lost all your stuff again? Well, don't worry, there's like four more capsules hidden around somewhere, I'm sure. It's like, what, what did you do with the old ones I gave you? Hmm. I see about a high capacity one, that one's fine. I guess it must have been the original Sony ones that were bad, which is not surprising. I mean, everything with the PSP, including the Vita, which is now officially dead, was a problem. I mean, you had battery problems, apparently. Um, you had dead pixels. I ran into a lot of them while I was working at Walmart. Uh, just basically, like, people bringing back PSPs, returning them, like, within 90 days, but having dead pixels on the screen. And then, of course, you had the proprietary memory cards, because Sony wants to do things their way and don't want to pay the license uh, for anything else, like an SD card or anything else, so then they have proprietary memory cards, which were stupidly expensive. I mean, very expensive, like, gosh, let's, let's take a look at my PSP, I got it somewhere. Where is my PSP? There it is, give me one second. open the PSP memory. Yeah, I have a one gigabyte stick that I remember spending like 40 bucks on. I think it was, it, it was probably around 40 or 50 dollars for just a one gigabyte stick for my PSP. Just so you could like save games and, uh, you know, put stuff you bought either on the store or anything else like that on it. Which is why, thankfully, the PSP was very easy to hack. And a lot of people did that. They're like, oh, I'm not spending extra money for games and stuff like that, this overpriced system. And to be honest, there weren't really many games that I really wanted for the PSP. Any games I could really think were outstanding. Check out the ones I really enjoy, like I actually have on emulator. There were some good games, but like nothing really like, sticks out in mind, you know, like you have to have this. It's kind of like, eh. Yeah, so this is the Mega Man game where it's kind of wonky, like, you have to press dash and jump at the same time in order to get that, like, really long jump. Whereas by the time X3 came out, like, you could just hold it down. That's where I can't get to it right now. Need the flame shot. But, uh, you could just hold down the dash button on a wall and you do the longer jump automatically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the same thing that they didn't learn, like, for whatever reason, Sony just did not learn with the PSP at all. And they just continued the same mistakes with the Vita. It's like, 
I don't think there's anybody who was really like, oh my god, the Vita is like, I have to get one. I mean, it's just kind of like a difference in market. Of course, you know, handhelds do ridiculously well in Japan because a lot of people take trains everywhere they go, and you're on a train usually up to two or three hours a day, uh, either getting to and from work or wherever you're going. So that sense, like, handhelds make sense, but it's like here in the States, not really a whole lot. The rest of the world where not everything is built around trains for public transportation. But, like, it's still, I mean, just locking you into, like, their proprietary stuff is crazy. Okay, it's like he's gonna jump. Oops! That was outside of range. I thought wrong. Yep, OLED, and the touchscreen on the back for reasons why I don't remember. <laughs> it's like, it was one of their gimmick things, because I mean, every console seems like it'd have a gimmick. PlayStation 4 has touchscreen on this controller, it's on the Dual Shock. And games when they first came out had to use it, but now I can't think of a single game that's using it anymore. Dude, will you just bum rush it? So the first versions had the OLED, and that's a touchscreen on the back, and it's they always got to have a gimmick with it. I mean, they were trying to copy Nintendo, but like, we have to have a gimmick for it, it's dumb. And I think the Vita touchscreen was also touch-sensitive, too, if I remember. So you're getting, like, all these big greasy fingerprints on the top, like, on the front where you're supposed to watch. Save it just for fun. There we go. There's one last game I want to play tonight before I end the stream. Because last time I played the 64 version of this game. So we're going to play the original version. I probably went the entire wrong way to get there. The long way. Yep. Pilot Wings! By the way, Pirates of the Dark Water, you'll never get an ending to this show. Makes me sad. I remember being a good cartoon. So this was one of the first games I got for my Super Nintendo when my parents finally broke down and got us one. Uh, it, the first games I had were Pilot Wings, Super Mario World because it came with the Super Nintendo itself, and then they bought Super Mario All-Stars, uh, but it wasn't the version with Mario World. So I had a lot of Mario games for the first games for my Super Nintendo. Join the Flight Club, not to be confused with Fight Club, which we don't talk about. Do you ever dream of flying? The Flight Club offers a variety of aerial sports that thrill and challenge you. Dare to take the first step and earn your license. Hi, I'm Tony, and I'll be your instructor for Area 1. Our lesson will cover a few basics, landing on an air you know, landing an airplane, skydiving for accuracy, and later manning an attack helicopter and getting people out of a war zone. Oops! Yeah, exactly. It's like, that threw me for such a loop when I got past, like, the fourth level. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, uh, get in this helicopter and, like, rescue these people. And you're gonna get shot down by, like, these, like, anti-aircraft air guns. And, like, in the middle of the jungle, I'm like, I thought this was a relaxing flying game. <laughs> it's like, what happened? And then you do it again for the ending of the game. It's like, oh, it turns out you're not a flight school, but you're like some kind of like PMC. It's like private military company. I'm like, what? 
It, it was quite a weird twist to throw in. Complete two objectives. Score 120 or more to pass. This is a fun one to watch on uh, a TAS as well, because you see like a lot of skydiving and stuff is just crazy landing. Like they'll be like going straight down, opening their parachute with like 50 feet to go, and then hitting the bonus one perfectly. It's it's entertaining. Oh, baby mode seven. So I got asked last stream, what's my favorite, like this, what's my favorite Pilot Wings game, either this one or 64? And I would have to say 64. Uh, because, you know, you're trapped here in this small little Mode 7 area. You know, it's hardware limitations, whereas the 64 version gave you more freedom to explore and, and go different places. Sweet, sweet Mode 7. <laughs> All right. Wow, okay, so I didn't expect to drop 300 feet like that. I was like, okay, I'll open it 300. This should be enough time to go over. Uh, no, you don't. Okay, so lesson learned. Never give up. Give up. <laughs> All right, try that again. This time we'll skip it. Yes. Why am I doing skydiving in a flight school? Well, you never know when you're going to crash your plane, so... And to crash your plane and simultaneously need to fly through rings. That can't be stressful more than enough. Seventy, you know. I thought wrong. Eh, Seventy, I don't know. I'll take it. Now you're using good judgment. I like that first attempt. What were you thinking there? Let's see, maneuver, speed up, speed down. Got it. Follow the green glide path and land on the runway. was okay. Nobody died. Yeah, I got my 100. There we go. Love his bug out expression. Wow, what a knockout. Apparently I flashed him. Congratulations. You are now certified. We didn't teach you how to take off that, you know, how to take off that airplane, but somehow you managed to land it, so here's your license. <laughs> we figured you were good enough. My name is Shirley, and your next lesson will feature the Rocket Belt. Not Rocket Pack, because <laughs> that's, uh, that's trademarked. Not Jetpack, that's definitely trademarked. And, uh, not Rocketeer, because that game is just terrible. Complete three objectives. 220 or more to pass. Rocket Belt. So I know you got slow jets, fast jets, shift view. Okay. Fly through three, fly through three rings, land on target, lose points for landing early.
I've heard people say that this game is like just a Mode 7 demo, but it's like, you know, it's actually kind of challenging. I might want to give it a try. Don't write it off as just like, oh, it's a Mode 7 demo mode. It's like, eh. Aha! Oh, it's a cool task to see. I like to say, especially with the parachuting stuff. And the penguin dives. Okay, that did not jump me very high. <laughs> It's like, wow, I just killed all my momentum. Ten points. Don't waste your bonus stage. Screw you, lady. Sorry, I didn't know that all my momentum would be dead and I'm one bounce. Sky Devine. Maneuver three through five rings land inside the yellow target area. God, why do you hate me, Nimix? I mean, sure, there's flying through rings. I can see the parallels here between this game and Superman 64, but why? You're an evil, evil man. to see it, though, on the, uh, GDQ. Pretty sure they did it on GDQ. It's just... god-awful. Fantastic old. I won't judge by appearance. Well, that's good because you you, you shouldn't. And were you judging me on appearance before? Just because I have a nipple on my forehead doesn't mean I can't fly an airplane. Your instructor lands here. Now I will try flying the hang glider. Current altitude of 500 feet, then land on target. Layer a quick turn. Okay. Well, you get towed to this by a biplane, which means they had to take off with you being dragged along underneath the biplane. Like how you still have your shins and your skin, I don't know. Yeah, roller blades actually, it's the 90s, so.
Yes. Yeah, I don't think they would do that even back then, unless they were psychic. You can, however, do that in... You can do that in Pilot Wing 64, though. There is a replica of New York with Twin Towers. Okay, it seems so easy now, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Very easy. Green, green bar shaped beams land on the target over the water. Uh, I remember this one being tricky. Sounds like the hitboxes were too big for it. Actually, it's better than I thought. Remember, like, map four, like the next level, it gets like really hard, just really jumps up in difficulty. Oh, yeah, it was real fun. I mean, you could find lots of different things, like the uh, gas station. I think it was around... It must have been near New Orleans, New Orleans or somewhere. I can't remember what it was exactly. I mean, it was the southern state. You could, like, fly really low by the gas station, and, like, it'd refill your gas on your... either your rocket belt or your uh, biplane. Your gyrocopter. I just stopped thinking what it was. It's not a biplane. Your hatred copter. It probably would. See, it, it most likely would. They would probably take it out. That's just great. I thought you were supposed to die. You're doing okay, but you can do better. Screw you, dude. It's like everyone's like this. Okay, so like everyone here is either passive aggressive or aggressively passive. I'm not sure which one it is, but they're jerks. Light plane. Take off, fly through rings over the course, and land on runway. Okay. See, now it finally teaches you how to like take off your airplane. If you ever find yourself back in time in World War One, I'm sure that the biplane will come in very handy. Correcting is really hard in this one. Oof. You used to the analog controls and all of a sudden you don't have that anymore. Man, wind is knocking me way up in the air. It's a lot harder to course correct on this without analogs. I mean, it's like, especially playing, like, Pilot Wing 64 the other day, it's like, you can... It's not too hard of a game until you get like, the last, like, levels you need. Like, the last three levels, or subset of levels, then it gets really tricky. But, I mean, the analog really helps out in that game. It's like, not having it for this and kind of getting stuck, like, it locks you into whatever position. It's very hard to course correct. a thing. <laughs> Keep your legs parallel to the ground instead of please don't crash our expensive airplane and die in the process. I was three points short. Oh my gosh. Why? Alright, so let's look up some insanity real quick. Parallel wings, SNES, codes. 
Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, so after you beat mission like level four, this is what comes up on the screen. Secret command, our agent has infiltrated enemy headquarters in Izanu Island. Your instructors have been freed and await rescue in the heliport. Using the radar as a guide, infiltrate the airspace and rescue them. What happened to my little flying happy game? It's like our agent, it's like, what? It's like, are we just like sneaking into other countries to teach people how to fly? Is that not legal? So you take out from the destroyer. We have missiles. Best to get some air. And you will need these, and you will need some distance up there because there's hidden anti-aircraft guns in here. There they go. Yeah, I remember it was like Mission 8, they start like having like hidden ones. Like you can't see them at all, and they're just hidden in the jungle, and there's a lot of them. There's been a couple times I've actually been able to like swoop in and like just dive bomb the area and get like right onto the heliport. Oop. There we go, didn't see that one coming. So it makes like the last one like really hard is it's at night. It's and you have a lot more shooting at you. Let's try this again. Wait, I changed my mind! Alright, I'll go. <laughs> Wait a minute, I realize this is insane. I don't know how to fly a helicopter. You didn't teach me this part. I was thinking, great, I might be able to do it just one shot like that. Nope. And then what do you do after all this? You go back to, like, learning how to fly airplanes and stuff. With the same instructors again, but just harder levels.
Yeah, here we go. Here's the hidden ones. Yeah, so it's pretty tricky. Let's try the last one. Okay, so that one is eight, eight, two, nine, four, three. Guess what? It happened again! We're highly incompetent. Lately, the evil syndicate has grown. And now have kidnapped a government VIP that opposes them. Why doesn't that government, you know, army go after them? Good question! But our agent has penetrated their hideout and they await your rescue from the heliport tonight. Please! He is my brother. Okay, that just gives me even more questions. Yes. Whenever going for any type of covert rescue, make sure you turn on your floodlight so everyone can see you coming from miles away. Rule number one, special operations. Maybe have some flares. Fireworks! That's, that's a good way to like sneak in too. They'll never see it coming, so they'll be distracted by the fireworks going off. No one think, hey, that's a helicopter. I'm like, no, hey, crown display, cool. Notice instead of two volleys, are shooting three now, usually. Oh, Advance Wars is a lot of fun. I agree. But right now I'm on my Super Nintendo Classic, so I don't have that on here. But yeah, but Advance Wars is a great, great game. My only downside I have with it is that... Uh, you're like, the first time you play it, you are forced to do the tutorial level. You cannot skip it. So much for that strategy. I'm like, I'll dive bomb in there. Also, what's up to you all? It's good to see you. Unfortunately, I'm ending the stream now. I'm sorry, everybody. I've been playing for about two, two and a half hours, just about. That too, yeah. So I need a floodlight and then a stereo. Probably playing right at the Valkyries. That'd be a good one to do. Uh, fireworks, flare shooting off. Maybe a flashing neon sign might help, too. Like, because I put in that code, it assumes I'm an expert now. Hey, it even starts you at level 5. We'll do this, because after you beat the first helicopter mission, this is where you normally are. This time will practice skills that you learned in your first lesson. However, at this time, you must try flying in some cold winter weather. And for some reason, they're going to send you in completely unarmed, too. I mean, it's like, you can't have any guns with you, you gotta find everything on sight. Oh, this is killer for my light sensitivity. Alright, starting strong. Barely got that ring. As long as it rings?
Yeah! Landed! Technically it landed. I, I've shattered both legs of my pelvis, but I've landed. You seem to use pretty good judgment. Um, yeah, we'll see you back here in another three, four months after you get your new hips put in and you've healed up from that awesome landing you did. I can do it! Oh, I just thought of a game I don't... I'm pretty sure I don't have on here. Uh, let me write down real quick. Turn and Love that game. I think I have it. Yeah, I should have it. Uh, I do. I even have a complete box. Plus the two rings. Careful when landing the icy. Yeah, the icy runway is slick. Um, I'm pretty sure that airports usually will take great care to de-ice their runways. Usually the goal is to prevent horrible air disasters, so you don't end up on that show Air Disasters on. I think it's Smithsonian Channel. My parents watch that. That show is addicting. Land now. Okay. Landing. Okay. You're using good judgment, am I? I didn't qualify, I was off by six points, so I suck, apparently. I'm sorry, I'm not certified. Alright, so let me take a look. I want to see if I have this one game on here. I can't remember if I do or not. Uh, here we go. Wolfenstein 3D. Why do I have Wolverine out of Man of Rage? That game sucks. Why do I put that on here? Uh, let's see. I do! Turn and burn! I actually do have that on here. True Lies. I played this on the Genesis a while ago. And then we have Tenchi Moyo. This is a good RPG. I tried playing this earlier. Turtles in Time. I don't know what's wrong with it, but... There's, like, no sound. So I don't know why it's doing this. But earlier when I tried to put some Sega Genesis games on here, they were playing at, like, about 125-130% speed. And no sound as well. And what's really bizarre about this is that the game runs, but there's no sound. But I can't exit back to the main menu. Like, right now, I'm going to hit the reset nothing and you're gonna have to trust me on this but right now i just turned off the snes classic i hit the off button it is in the off position it is still on and working it's like the game it refuses to shut down so i actually have to pull physically pull the power on it in order to get it to turn off and turn it back on it should probably say please wait or shutting down or pop back up then it'll bring me back into the main menu like right here, so I don't know why that happens exactly. I'm not sure if you True Lies will work too. So there's still some issues with emulating, I guess, inside this. I'm not sure. Maybe it's my ROMs or headers off or something. Yeah, so if you remember me playing this on the Sega Genesis, you'll remember that, like, a lot of... Started off hitting the wrong button. I remember... So you got the shoulder buttons. Which ones might dive? There we go. X buttons dive. Because I killed that one guy, but you remember... Like, you can see that this game is a lot more colorful on Super Nintendo. Don't mind me. I'm just walking through a party with... Obviously carrying a gun in a room full of people with Uzis. Nothing to be alarmed about. 
this is another one of those kind of really kind of like not really maybe not really a hidden gem but underappreciated game that I played the other day but that's beside the point though I'm kind of delaying the inevitable shutting down why Because we've reached the end of the stream. Thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. I do apologize, you know, do uh, appreciate it. It's the word I'm looking for. Always fun to, to stream and have people lurk and show up. Patrick, it's always good to see you around here, you know, especially in Chad. Uh, Nimix for showing up there. T. Wallace, Ronnie, and of course, the Morgue. And anybody who is lurking in chat. Oh, Fico. Can't forget Fico, too. And anybody else lurking in chat, you guys are always great. So I do plan on streaming again. Um, the next game actually I want to stream is a fighting game called Dong Dong Never Die. It is a Chinese fighting game in the vein of Street Fighter. It is something you have to see to believe because it is, it is just, it's beyond description. It's, it's amazing what they're managed to do there. So I will be streaming Dong Dong Never Die next time. If you live in an area... That does, if, if wherever you are in the world, if they have daylight saving time, that's today. So you're losing an hour of sleep, spring forward, it sucks. I'm not looking forward to it. It still throws my brain off every single time it happens for about a good two weeks. But I will be back streaming, probably not tomorrow, but I'm going to say the next day. So today's Saturday, so Monday most likely, we'll be streaming Dong Dong Never Die. So uh, I always stream at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't know when that is, just type it into Google and it will tell you for wherever you are in the world. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter or just peek on my page there at Wurzel555. I always post up ahead of time when I'm going to be streaming and what I will be streaming. Uh, and also if you need to, like if I need to uh, delay the stream or, or cancel or whatever, you know exactly what's going on with it right there at that time. So let's see, let me see what else is up and streaming it now at the moment, who I can host. It doesn't look like a whole lot of people, so we'll probably send you the riff tracks. So like I said, I'll be back on probably Monday, most likely, streaming Dong Dong Never Die. It's something you're definitely going to want to check out. But thanks for hanging out. I uh, hopefully see you guys next time, and peace.